Faith and Chief Parchment. Well, Carla, what most students and tech parents don't know is that Texas Tech officers basically have two choices when dealing with students. If hand to hand force isn't working or if their presence isn't enough, the officers are required to use deadly force against the student. Texas Tech police officers are not allowed to use any sort of in between or medium force on students. For example, the officers aren't allowed to use pepper spray. But the NFL just decided to move the game to Sun Devil Stadium in Phoenix. They hope it will help. Aid the residents who have been evacuated. In the 911 tape, Cowley's mom Darlene says she thought the man trying to break into her house might be her son. We also know that Cowley recently divorced from his ex-wife Kelly. Which presidential hopeful has the best chance of winning? Depending on which candidate can swing the labor union vote. Oh, right. As we said, Sunday evening at the Academy Awards, we won't just be tuning in to see who wins the coveted Oscar statuettes. The event has become as much about fashion as it has about awards, and a big part of that glamour is the jewelry. How easily can Lubbock teens get alcohol and what area businesses are making it easy for them? In an exclusive report tonight, ABC 28's Aaron Kennedy goes undercover to find out what's being done to keep liquor out of your teen's hands. Five words no 17-year-old wants to hear, unless you're this minor who's working undercover for the Texas Alcoholic Beverage Commission. Do you guys have a goal then that you're trying to get to? Zero percent sales. TABC agent Denny Carlton helps operate the minor stings around Lubbock. A successful sting isn't about violators getting caught in the act. Instead, a successful sting is when no one sells. Um, I really feel good when we do a minor sting and nobody sells. Because that means what we're doing is working. On the other hand, Carlton's efforts aren't slowing down 19-year-old Beth Frampton. How hard is it for her to get liquor in Lubbock? It's very easy. We do it every weekend, every Friday. Yeah. John Ackerman agrees. It's, it's a lot easier to drink at like a bar. Yeah. I mean, well, not like a bar, but like a restaurant. It's easier to drink at because they might think that you're of age or they just don't care because the college student working and they want ID because they want to be the cool person. Now, while the 20-year-old Rob Martin says he doesn't want a chance walking into a bar and asking for a beer, it doesn't mean his fridge isn't stocked. If I timed you on oh, Friday okay. night and I said, okay, how long is this going to take you? Go. To get beer? Yeah. Oh, 30 minutes. <laughs> That's it. In fact, Rob has a pretty good idea about who's selling and who isn't. All the places at the Strip, all the stores at the Strip, card, for sure. Um, I'm sure half the bars. Maybe a little bit below that. He's right. During the undercover minor sting, none of the places on the strip sold to the minor. However, when TABC began hitting restaurants on this night, three out of six sold. Here's a list of the restaurants that sold Casa Ole, the Caboose, and the Wrecker Room. And the restaurants that didn't sell to the minor Rudy's, Mama Rita's, and Rosa's. <laughs> Between conscientious servers and TABC agents, the battle to keep your children safe will continue. I think parents should feel safe in the fact that we're doing everything we can and the best we can, but there's still more to do. Good job. Aaron Kennedy, ABC 28 News. ABC 28 Sasha Bray spoke with one man on the scene who says he's been driving a truck for 15 years, but he's never seen a dirt storm like what he saw yesterday. So the investigation will continue. As for now, 10 people were brought to UMC for treatment. One of those people died. The others have not been released yet. Six other victims were taken to Covenant Medical Center for treatment. No word yet on their condition. If you found a bag stuffed with money in the middle of the street, what would you do? Lubbock resident Darlene Lopez was faced with that question on February 20th. She found a bag with $3,500 in it while driving back to Our Lady of Guadalupe Church, where she works. When she called Lubbock police, they knew exactly who it belonged to. Philip Thrash owns ATMs in the city. He says he left the money bag on top of his car and then drove off. And Thrash offered Lopez a reward, but no matter how much he insisted, she refused. Both of them believe it was divine intervention that brought them together. Over, That's right. Yeah, a little bit more rainfall. Time to go buy some tulips and celebrate. Ah, yes. Right. Time to... Uh, do, is it... I don't know anything about planting tulips, so I was going to ask if it's time to plant tulips. Or I don't know about planting. I know about buying them. Uh, just, oh, just buying, <laughs> not it. planting to grow, right. just buying to just look at. Just to celebrate yeah, it. I That's see. What I would and by the way, I am also raising money for the <laughs> new furniture for Carlos Foundation, and I will be throwing a party and washing cars in Natoga. I don't get the toga. <laughs> Why are you toga? $500 to wash a car. 
I, I, you know what? I'm living in the no, wrong place. No, I think place. the $500 is to see George Clooney in a toga. Oh, see? Well, there, I, I, guess. I, guess <laughs> I guess I won't be we'll making $500 can get it. per car. <laughs> we'll find out, though. But right now, the time is 631, and the temperature is 39 degrees. Coming up next on Good Morning Lubbock is more Ray. The kids also had a contest for the most unusual pig, best dressed pig, and even the most colorful pig. Haiti's exile president blames President Bush for his removal. That tops this morning's more national news. A man who was shot in the depot district trying to break up a fight over the weekend is out of the hospital. Daniel Sines was shot in the arm Saturday night. Police say the shooter, Timothy Leak, parked his Corvette in front of the Cactus Theater with his daughter inside. Leak asked his wife to get in the car. She refused, and he pulled her in by her hair. That's when Sines stepped in. He kicked the car and cut the convertible top with a knife. Leak pulled out a gun and shot Sines. Leak is charged with two counts of aggravated assault and one count of endangering a child. A local sandwich shop had a scary night. Around 12.30 this morning, firefighters responded to the subway at 2529 82nd Street. There was a small electrical fire in the kitchen. Firefighters had everything under control in about 20 minutes. The shop was not open at the time. A man is arrested after leading police on a 20-minute car chase through East Lubbock. Around 11.45 last night, police were in pursuit of a car that would not pull over. After a brief pursuit, the man bailed out of his car around MLK and Canyon Lakes and then jumped into the lake. Police say Alvin Bradley had felony warrants out for his arrest. Bradley didn't get far, though. Police apprehended him and took him to jail. An elderly driver gives a Lubbock Fabric store an unwanted drive through The woman drove her car into Joanne Fabrics and Craft Store at 82nd and Slide. It happened about 11.30 yesterday morning. The driver says she accidentally hit the gas pedal instead of the brake. The car smashed through the front window. A customer was caught underneath the rubble, but she wasn't hurt. And about 2 o'clock, a car hopped a curb and plowed into a fire hydrant. The wreck at 32nd and University made a mess of someone's front lawn. Landsca landscaping rocks were scattered everywhere, and the driver says another car pulled in front of him, and he was trying to avoid a collision. The crash didn't hurt anyone, nor did it interrupt water service. The time is 6.07, and the temperature is 39 degrees. Still to come on Good Morning Lubbock. They're trendy, they're fast. And all of a sudden, uh -huh. My dad and I saw these lights come over the uh, top of the screen. More than half a century ago, in the back of a 1949 Ford convertible, Pat Allgood saw something she still can't explain. We are sitting there uh, watching the movie, obviously, and all of a sudden, uh, my dad and I saw these uh, lights coming over the screen. It was just a formation of lights uh, about the size of, oh, maybe a little bit smaller than a Frisbee. In August of 1951, Pat Allgood was one of many Lubbock residents to witness a world-famous UFO. You know, Lubbock doesn't get a lot, of, uh, a lot of publicity, so this was our big time to shine back in 51. And shine we did, maybe even glow. According to the Lubbock Avalanche Journal, September 1st, 1951, the unidentified glowing objects were seen all across the county. Some people saw colored lights, others said they moved faster than a jet, but no one could explain exactly what they saw. Now in 2004, people still don't know what they really were. Almost 54 years later, and the only explanation the government came up with still just doesn't make much sense to Pat. Because that little bird in, in the picture there, you know, I can't imagine that turning into a, a disc that's all lit up at night. That's right. The government explained the sighting as a natural phenomenon. In other words, they said the lights were birds reflecting the lights beneath them. I don't think I was terribly impressed about it being birds because I couldn't see how birds would do that. Officials thought the bird was a plover, which is about the size of a quail. However, game wardens say plovers don't fly in flocks larger than three. And Pat says if it had been birds, she should have heard something. But they don't fly over quietly, and I can't see them reflecting in a, the form of a disc if they were flying over. Other experts say these pictures aren't fake, and the discs were flying much too fast to be birds, or anything but an unidentified flying object. Pat thinks it was a special experience, but something as simple and beautiful as a sunrise. It was just a, a wonderful thing that flew over. It's, you know, sort of like the sun coming up in the morning. That's, that's nice. I can't explain it, but 
I do, I do believe it. <laughs> a belief that's just as strong even without an explanation. Aaron Kennedy, ABC 28 News. It down to the extent that it would get run down would be some of the tenants that don't like to pay the rent. It's a big.